Hanlon and I'm the editor of Wet Pixel and I'm joined today by Mike Bartik from the Philippines. Hi Mike. Um, hey Adam, how are you? Yeah, good to, it's good to see you. Nice to see you. Here. Mike's the, yeah, you too. Mike's the photo pro and the manager at Crystal Blue Resort in Anilao in the Philippines and is an expert on blackwater shooting, which is really what our, our conversation is about today. But before we set off about that, obviously we, we, we're coming to what we hope is the end of the COVID-19 pandemic. And Mike's got some great news about what's going on at the resort in, in Anilao in the Philippines. So, so how are you guys doing out there, Mike? Actually, uh, really well, thanks. It's a good, good thing to bring up, very timely. Yeah. Um, we're just, yeah, just this week, uh, we have been certified to reopen the resort, uh, along with some of the other resorts in the area. Um, we're beginning to reopen again for the, the local tourism to begin, Fantastic. which is kind of a, a lead in, like a soft opening for uh, in, international travel. So um, this week we're able to get back in the water, Great. you know, get back in the boats, yeah, and um, and diving, and of course uh, doing the things that we love the most and missed, yeah, so dearly, you know, as a diver, uh, having that removed from our lifestyle has just, you know, unless you're a diver, uh, I don't think you really understand the the ramifications of having that. Removed suddenly, you know. I'm, yeah, uh, and, and particularly, anyways, particularly, particularly tough for you guys because you're living surrounded by these amazing dive sites um, and these fantastic, yeah. and you can't go near them. It's just, it's just torture. That really is. It's not fair. <laughs> you weren't even allowed to just go into the water ankle deep to cool off. Wow, nothing. I mean, wow. we snorkel in the afternoons, kayak. I mean, it's it's all about the water there, and uh, yeah, so it's. But surreal, you know, to, to really sum it up in one word, you know, surreal. Uh, of course, everybody in the world has been under the same kind of situation, too, and learning how to deal with it. And, um, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, hopefully we never have to experience this again in no, our lifetime. No. May we live in interesting times, yeah. And um, anyway, I, it's really good news that you're, you're getting started again, Mike. That's good news for all of us. Yeah. Um, so, um, but I think today's subject really is to talk a little bit about Blackwater. Um, and and yeah. th there's, there's, there's not a great deal of point in me getting too involved. I've done a little bit of Blackwater shooting, but, but I, have, I have nothing like your experience or your knowledge. So, so um, rather than me carry on about it, I'll pass it on to you, Mike. But perhaps a good place to start is, is to try and define what is Blackwater. So, and I think you've got, some, right. you've got some ideas on that. So I'll hand it over to you and I'll, um, you carry on. Okay, sounds good. Excellent. All right, so, uh, you know, blackwater diving is, has really taken the world by storm, you know, hasn't it? I mean, in all these Absolutely. different uh, competitions, yeah. so just the last three or four years, uh, it's just become red hot, you know, and yep. so much so, so much so that it's actually created their own categories, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, and a lot of people think, you know, that um, it's, it's unobtainable. Like, oh, that's that's not for me, or you have to go really deep, or yeah. you know, there's there's always strange things that that surround it. And you know, the thing about blackwater diving is it's very accessible for anybody. Yeah. You know, you could you could do it from a boat, you could do it from shore, um, and uh, you know, so um, it's just one of those things. So you know, for me, I've always kind of been fascinated with sea monsters. Sea myself, monsters, you know, and I always have been, wow. and not just because of, you know sea monsters, you know, yeah. but, but what it really, what it really entails, you know. I mean, you look at these old books and illustrations of uh, giant squids grabbing people off of boats, yeah. and you know these these things, and and I had to think, you know, was there some kind of truth to this? You know, I mean, we'll never know because these animals are long gone. Yeah. Right. Yep. At least we think they are. Yeah, At least we think yeah. are. <laughs> um, so I've been really fascinated with that kind of stuff uh, forever. You know, and not to say that's what, why I blackwater dive, but um, anyways, that's just one of the things about me. It's, so It's the exploration um, thing, isn't it? It's about finding stuff in the unknown. That's the, yeah. It is. Yeah. It's about the unknown. It really is. And um, so much of diving is like that. But here we have the added element of... Uh, almost being blindfolded, you know, when you're swimming through the dark water at night. So 
Um, what is blackwater diving? You know, first of all, you know, it's really about exploring the open sea at night. Um, and it's referred to as blackwater diving. Yep. You know, we, uh, we basically explore the top 30 meters or so um, of the epipelagic zone, um, which basically covers the first 200 meters of the surface from the surface down. Yep. Right. Yep. So the subjects that live in that general area um, do this thing that's called an upwards migration every yep. single night. Yep. And um, so we try to swim down to meet them. Yep. And uh, so so for me, it's really the ultimate uh, for photo ops. It really is. Uh, and the adventure of it, right? Yep. It's just a lot of fun. The, the subjects that we had the possibility to see can range from being very small microscopic subjects. You know, you could be shooting something like a snail villager, very small. And the next moment, something massive is swimming by. Yeah, yeah. We, you know, it, we, I, I, know, I know we had we had white tips on a, on a blackwater dive um, in Florida. It was <laughs> You're just not prepared for yeah. something. Suddenly there's something the size of a white tip. It's not a big shark, but still it was like, oh, hello. Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. What we've had we've had uh, molas, right? We've had mola molas uh, rocket between us on yep. dives on black water dives. So yeah, it's it's highly unexpected. Yeah. So um, of course, you know those things are exciting to see, but they're not really our target subjects, no. right? Yep. Yep. So when we when we go out there, we're really looking small. And um, I've found for myself when I when I concentrate on looking for the small things, the larger stuff will always avail itself. You know, and if I go out there looking for bigger things, I always miss the beauty of the small plankton because so much of it is very, very beautiful. And by using our, our just standard macro setups, we can really capture that beauty. Yep. So some of the other things, shrimps, crabs, worms, larval fish, especially yep. cephalopods. And my God, who would have thought there's so many, you know, there's like 350 or 400 different kinds of squids. Wow. I mean, Wow is right. Yeah. They're just amazing. beautiful subjects. Yeah. Fast, just the ultimate hunting animal. Yeah. You know, thank God they're small. Thank God. <laughs> and they have other things. Yeah. Other subjects that are more benign, like these salt chains that can get to 20, 30 feet, 10 meters, you know, and live for 50, 100 years. Uh, uh, jellyfish that are immortal, you know, and, and all these other things. So. For me, I, I feel that, um, you know, part of why we dive is really learning, yeah. that whole learning experience. And, and as a photographer, and as a diver, being able to get back into that, it's, it's just like you're diving into a classroom every time. Fantastic. And uh, just this amazing experience. So, um, so how we do it is that we basically uh, use a, a downline. Okay. Right. So on the downline, we have uh, approximately anywhere from – and the, the lights that we use on the downline, the intensity varies. Right. Okay. I've, I've started off, I started off at the very beginning using a single uh, rope with one little light on the bottom, throw it overboard, you know, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> quite a lot. <laughs> throw it overboard. Yeah, quite a lot. I, yeah. I learned, I've learned a lot. Yeah. And uh, so uh, we've increased it from one torch up to, um, on a normal night, we usually go out with between 80 and 100,000 lumens of light on the downline. Yep. Um, and, and that attracts the plankton and yep. forms what we call a plankton cloud, right? So it brings this uh, nightly upwards migration of subjects um, to the line, almost like moths to a, to a bright light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, um, and, and those subjects, those, those, Planktons are what attracts the predators. Yep. That energy, the sound, whatever it is, that's what attracts the predators, the larval fish, the squids and octopi, octopuses, excuse me, and other subjects. So yep. that's the idea, and we'll talk about uh, some of that as we go through it. So, you know, you have this mass of animals that lives very deep during the daytime in the safety and uh, of darkness. Yep. All right at the at the bottom of this epipelagic zone, yeah. And um, because they're animals, obviously they have to feed. So at night, under the safety of darkness, they begin to rise to the surface to disperse. Yep. And um, that's described so beautifully by David Attenborough as the uh, 
you know, the, the nightly deal migration. Yep. Uh, I highly suggest people to Google that um, for some really cool reading. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, so Mike, the, 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 the lights that you use, just to, just to clarify this, the lights that you use attract plankton, um, which has its own interesting stuff in it. And then, the, yeah. then on top of that, you've then got plankton-based predators that are then attracted on top of it. That's, I've got that right, haven't I? And then, obviously, predators on the predator. So, you, so you're building a basic food chain that, that's attracted ultimately by those lights. Yeah. That's right. Okay. A food web. A food web, yeah. It's yeah. A yeah. Food web. Yeah. Uh, we're just drawing that web in closer to us. And, um, you know, it's just one thing after another. It's the energy, the sounds. Uh, yeah. You know, fish have a, uh, a way of, of feeling yeah. Uh, what's happening, the water yeah. around them, yeah. and um, they come to that. Yeah. They come to that. Yeah. So, um, which is what I, I find very ironic as well, because, you know, a lot of these subjects are very light sensitive. Right. So, they'll, you know, they, it's like they hear the sounds, whatever it is, feel it. They yeah. see the lights. Yeah. They're attracted to it. Yet once they get there, all they want to do is get away from it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so it's like the moth and the flame again, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So you use a torch. Here it comes. Wow! Look at that. You know, and then all of a sudden you're suing for your life, trying to catch it. And then, you know. So 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 where does this happen, Mike? Where where should we go to to catch it or to to, to like blackwater? Then where's where's the best place in the world to do this? Or are there multiple places? What, what should we be looking for as a good place to to do some blackwater um, photography? What? I, I'm glad that you asked that. I'm, I'll talk about um, what to look for locally, oh, wherever, wherever you are. But, but I, I think that um, you know, since in the last in the last few years, uh, when we started the, the Facebook group, um, yep. the Blackwater Group Facebook. Yep. Um, we we've, we've watched and helped other places open around the world. Indonesia is now doing quite a bit of blackwater diving. I have a friend in. Um, in the Maldives, who's doing black water. Oh, okay. Florida has been doing it all along. They've been doing it for about six or seven years now, and it's red hot. Is, yeah. Of course, yeah. yeah, of course, Kona, yep. uh, place in Mexico. We've done blue and black water in California. Right. Um, and, and there's just more and more places coming online. So as this opens up, we're going to see it, you know, uh, different places, different locations coming online. And I encourage people all over the world uh, to try this because it's a piece of the pie that we're not getting if we're always looking at the substrate during a day dive. Yep. You, know? you have to just reel the clock back a little bit and think, where did all this stuff come from? Yep. Right? Yeah, yeah, and it sure. didn't have oh, there. It, it begins its life as plankton and then settles. Yep. So if you swim out off the reef, you know, or take a boat, like I recommend, and, and get out there and, and and try to do this. You'll be able to witness some of this life before it settles. You know, it's really exciting. Yeah, for sure. Sure, it's a it's, it's a whole different. Well, it's a whole different. I was going to say a whole different world. It's not a whole different world, but it's a it's a whole different way of looking at the at the oceans and the life in the oceans. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Like a layer. It's a whole new layer. Yep. 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 Absolutely. Well, yeah. Great. So, so, uh, so I, sorry, I interrupted. So, what should we be looking for in, in terms of a good site to, to to do blackwater dives? Then, blackwater photography. In terms of uh, location, what I what I do, like if if I was where where you are, and I and I said, hey, I want to set up a blackwater dive. First, what I would do is, is start looking at the marine habitats and um, uh, in the different locations. First, start looking at the marine habitats. And, um, you know, what I, what I look for on shore is any place that has uh, fringing reef systems, mangroves, uh, things of that nature right. uh, that can feed the, a food chain because yeah. that food chain starts on, on shore and then, and then it drifts out to, the, out to sea and creates uh, more of a food source for other subjects. So, um, you know, if you have coral reefs, uh, those kinds of things. And then, you know, as you look at that marine habitat, it's going to curve off from the shoreline and then get into the deep water. Right. So in the beginning, we used to seek the deepest water thinking, okay, this has got to be good. But, you know, in actuality, what we found is deep water that has, you know, some proximity to, um, to some kind of a shelf, pinnacles, uh, things of that nature seem to be better. Right. All right. 
and um, and then returning to those places often. So uh, that's that's what seems to be a very good combination of things. So you're looking for like shallow nurseries, so mangroves combined with reef with some deep water. So so a classic kind of yeah. shoreline, really. With with fast deep water access. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Fast deep water access. Makes sense. Yep. So those those tend to be really good as opposed to just a, a wall dive. Yep. You know, you might go to a place that's just a wall dive. Yep. Um, um, those are probably okay. But uh, I, I found that places that have more of an estuarian kind of setup uh, that slope off down tend to be richer. Yep. Yep. Because subjects settle there and it's easier for them to settle. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah, as opposed to clinging onto a wall where there's, you know, pure competition for any space. Any space, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So those are kind of what I look for. Um, I use a couple of different apps uh, to, you know, that I, I look at my phone. And this technology is wonderful, right? So Amazing. I take advantage of it. So I have two apps. One is um, called Navionics. Yep. And the other is basically uh, a moon and tide app. So I, I look at those and I, I determine um, where, in terms of depth and uh, like topography, uh, is good to do these dives. And then I try to time it so you know we have the best moon cycle and um, we're not dropping into a full-on current. You know, okay. I found that the shoulder of the current um, is the best, right near the apex, the top of the flood. Before it begins to drain, the shoulder on either side tends to be the best. Right, and that you can also for the for the out uh, for the Ebb side, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the return of the out. Yeah, yeah. So those tend to be the best. Um, and then what I look for on my app is uh, is is depth. Yep. Any kinds of anomalies like pinnacles, walls, drop offs, uh, things of those natures, and then I, I'll try to set up so we drift right across them. Or uh, drift along them, along those, and uh, and those t tend to be uh, pretty pretty rich in marine life. Right. So for us, we're we're typically diving over about 500 feet of water, which is I don't know, roughly a little less than 200 meters. Yeah, just under 200 meters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and in uh, Florida, it's about the same. Yeah. But in places places like Kona, they have you know. Uh, 3,000 meters of water they're diving over. I was going to say, 200 meters is deep, but it's not super deep. I mean, in, in oceanic terms, it's, it's actually quite relatively shallow. So, yeah, I always I always, yeah, absolutely. I always believe that, that black water is most productive over super abyssal, but obviously that's not the case. So it's interesting that you yeah. mentioned that, that you know, that the, the life needs a substrate as well. And, and obviously in, in 2,000 meters of water, it's, it's the substrate 2,000 meters below it. So it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah, it makes sense, yeah. yeah. Right. And, you know, when we, again, when we started that group, uh, I was getting a lot of pushback from people that were saying, oh, that's not black water diving. You know, black water is when you're over, you know. Then we started cranking out these crazy subject photos, and they're yeah. like, wow, you know, this is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is black water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, this, this can really be done almost anywhere in the world. And uh, so the, the apps that I use really helped me to find the correct locations, you know. Otherwise, uh, before that, I was using these uh, bathymetric maps supplied to me by the California Academy of Sciences. And um, we were just kind of cruising around on the boat, you know, looking at the phone, GPS. Oh, this looks like it's a pretty deep area. And, um, and throwing in. Yeah. And um, we never really had any consistent dives. So by using the apps, it also helped us to develop consistency to mark the areas to go back to on a regular basis yeah. and to start building up a, a baseline for data. Perfect. And uh, so the, the apps work in that nature as well. So very effective. Cool. So Mike, we, yeah. we found our Blackwater site. We've, we've, we've researched it using the search tools you just mentioned. Um, we're ready to yeah. go diving. What do we need to bear in mind when we're diving on Blackwater sites? Because obviously it's not normal diving. It's just not something on a reef. So, so, so what do we yeah. need to do to do Blackwater right? All right, well, first you're going to need some equipment to do this. It's kind of gear intensive. So uh, this is where your dive buddies come in. If you have uh, five or six dive buddies coming, you might want to say, everybody bring two extra torches for the downline. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Makes so sense. you need to build yourself a downline with the buoy, okay? And, and th this is how we've done it. And um, 
I've learned over just tons of experience. We started doing blue water diving in California uh, in 2008, 2009, in, in that, that time span. And um, we would just tie off to the boat. So I tried to repeat that here. And, uh, you know, the wind, it was, it was not doable. Right. So then we tried using a droge. And the droge, which is a parachute, basically yeah, parachute, yeah. Yeah. Would, would slow us down. But it was still not slow enough to spend the time needed to capture quality images. Because you're drifting too fast. So yeah. I, you're moving too fast. Yeah. So I, I finally decided, you know, we have to detach from the boat. And um, how can we do that? So I looked around. I found this big orange buoy, which I now call the pumpkin. <laughs> and, um, <Yeah>. and we, <laughs> we uh, put a little thing in the bottom so we could put our torch in that, and it glows at night. And then, of course, we put our, our 30 meter downline to that, or it's actually 22 meters uh, downline to that. So then, on that downline, I've I've I have a ton of camera equipment. I'm sure you have some spare camera equipment too. Yeah. So I just, I took advantage of that and I, I wove in um, strobe arms right. every five meters, right? So you have safety stop at the very top and then five meters, five meters, five meters, all the way. Through. So I have four or five light bays with, with uh, video lights all the way down. Okay. Right. That provides us, that provides us the light to bring in the planktons, it allows divers to have good spatial awareness. Reference, yeah. Reference. And then that buoy on the top gives an extra layer of safety for the boatman to see exactly where we're at at all times. And then also for us to begin and start the dives. So, um, you know, that's how we do it. It's been, I've brought everybody back every single time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's at the end of the day, it's a dive. Resort operator, yeah, vital part of the puzzle. You, you have to bring them back every time, yeah, not yeah. just once in a while. Yeah, you can't lose twenty five percent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's how we do it, you know. I, um, so you know what we do is so that we we find the location, we motor out there, we get the line rigged, we toss it in the water, we take our time kitting up and gearing up, and um, we give the line time to soak. Line soaks for 15 or 20 minutes. We slip into the water uh, and then begin the dive. And, um, you know, so what's important is um, as a diver is to have really good dive skills. I mean, we have to, you know. Keep going, Mike. It's all right. That's, they're, just, they're just seeing off the cannon wreck. <laughs> We have to just remember that we're we have to remember that we're divers first, right? And uh, and to put safety for uh, we're down there, so we can um, enjoy the dives and, and really capture the images that we want. And make sure that we're doing it safely, because you know when you're when you're on a substrate, it's easy to look at your 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 time and, and easy to keep track of things, but you know, when you're blackwater diving, for some reason, that, the time evaporates very quickly, and it's very easy to go deep accidentally. So that's another reason with, with the downline and those lights, you know, the diver knows when he's down there by the bottom light that he's pretty darn deep. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah so... It's also hard, I think, with photographically. You know, you're you're busy watching your viewfinder. You're watching what's going on through the lens. It's very easy to yeah. inadvertently, and certainly having the downline of keeping it as a reference makes makes it much easier. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It is. I call it three eye diving because yes. you have to have an eye in the viewfinder, an eye on the subject, and an eye on the eye on the downline. Yeah, yeah. That so would... you really you three eyes, yep. and um, you know, so you get used to it. Right? What really, really helps is paying attention to what your ears tell you. Yeah. You're out there. If your ears, if you're clearing, you know you're going up and down uh, quite frequently. Yeah. I personally I personally use um, Shearwater computers because they glow. Yeah. But, um, you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of companies out there that have these computers now that glow yeah. uh, that are very helpful. I have yeah. one on my, my arm, on my, on my camera, and one on my, the arm of my body. So I yeah. always have some kind of quick reference. Yeah. Yeah. But the – Without even looking at my computer, I could tell by just paying attention to my ears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good tip. That's a good tip. 
brilliant. Yeah. Um, Mike, I think um, that's a stunning episode. I think we've 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 gathered lots from that. So um, if I may, um, are we, we're going to get you to come back and talk more about gear and and also to show some of your pictures. Um, but I'll I'll uh, I'll I'll let you get on now. So. Um, Mike, if people are looking for more information about your images and about blackwater diving, where are you on the web? Are you on Instagram? How can they find you? I'm on Instagram. My my uh, handle there, I guess it says yeah. at dive CBR. Right. Yeah, uh, and then on Facebook, of course, Mike Bartik. Uh, we have the the Blackwater Photo Group, which is also on on Facebook. Yeah. Um, and then you know I'm I'm pretty easy to to reach that way. Yeah, um, I think I have four or five or six Facebook pages. So I mean, they're pretty easily accessible by social media. C- certainly, that I should point that out. You mentioned it earlier. I meant to come to circle back to it. The, the Blackwater group, which is Mike's Blackwater photo group on 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 Facebook, is amazing and beautiful images. So so if you are interested in seeing um, Blackwater images, it's a really good place to go. I mean, Mike shares some of his work there, but there's lots of other people too. is is a really good source. So yeah, thanks thanks for now, Mike. We'll uh, we'll circle back to you about equipment shortly, um, and I'm gonna um, just uh, wish our viewers all the very best. I'd like to thank our sponsor from this episode, which is Backscatter Photo and Video. Um, and please, if you like what you've seen here, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And um, if you obviously like this video, please hit like. And please feel free to make suggestions about any topics you'd like us to cover in the future. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you very much.